let's make it right let's make it diabetic monster right in this diabetic monster right we'll put it here this is our death strain here there is reduced production of insulin. reduced production of insulin mean and here what is there increase resistance to insulin right and in this death strain in this group of diseases there are many different types of diabetes for example yes the classical example in which there is reduced production of insulin is type 1 diabetes that is type 1 diabetes mellitus right in this case of course, we'll go. We'll discuss type one diabetes in detail in future. But right now, what I'm saying, the type one diabetes mellitus is a classical example in which there is severe reduction in production of insulin. insulin. Why produced? Why insulin is so less produced, or sometimes absolutely absent because beta cells which produce insulin they have attacks by the immune system and destroyed atom or we can say that beta cells of pancreas are destroyed due to autoimmune system. reaction yes. this is one example then on the other extreme we can put type 2 diabetes in type 2 diabetes the main problem is the major problem is resistance to the action of insulin at least in the initial stages of disease what is happening that beta cells of pancreas are there they might be producing insulin in normal level or even more than normal but cells are not responding to insulin right cells become deaf to the insulin right so these are the two extreme cases type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes classical thing in type 1 is there is absolute or very very dangerous reduction in production of insulin due to autoimmune destruction of beta cells of pancreas right in type 2 diabetes what we say classically in this case what happens that there is insulin is being produced at least in the early phase of disease right when because it this disease goes for many many years and over decades right so at least in the beginning of the disease or early stages of the disease insulin is being produced the real problem is in the beginning that tissues are not responding to insulin is that right so these are the only two conditions or two diseases then there are more more diseases type 1 type 2 after that i can say okay someone said gestational diabetes okay we put here gestational diabetes gestational diabetes mellitus or diabetes what is this this is a condition in which during the pregnancy there is tendency for hyperglycemia or there is hyperglycemia is that right we'll discuss in detail later but what happens in gestational diabetes in this case there is problem in production of insulin as well as there is peripheral resistance that tissues are not responding well to the insulin then there is another condition with very interesting name uh, we call it lada okay who will tell me lada stands for what latent, latent. The, yes l stands for latent, latent. Autoimmune, auto, immune, immune yes, diabetes, diabetes of, of adults, of adults. Okay, let me tell you now interesting thing. If I talk about all the patients in the world who are suffering with diabetes mellitus and if those patients are having real problem is 
underlying production of insulin right most of them will be youngsters type 1 diabetes but if you find a man who is 40 year old right a man 40 year old or 50 year old and autoimmune process destroys his beta cell which is less often right so actually at a very late age he has developed autoimmune destruction of beta cell so his condition will be somewhat similar to type one diabetes. 1 diabetes so such patients are called not type 1 diabetes because usually this is seen in younger patients because this is very late onset of type 1 diabetes like disease this is late onset of type 1 type 1 like disease but very late onset so we call it lada right basically both are similar condition autoimmune destruction of beta cells then i would put rather than putting gestational here i will put gestational little down and again i will put something which is very similar with type 2 right which is very similar with type 2 but develops at younger age again type 1 classically develops in younger age type 2 classically develops in older age everyone knows that every good doctor knows type 1 diabetes is at younger age and type 2 is at usually later age but if someone develop a disease like type, type 2 diabetes but at younger age is that right for example someone has diabetes, diabetes mellitus in the age of 20 but his real problem is not beta cell destruction his real problem is increased resistance to the action of insulin right it means insulin is there but is unable to produce its action insulin is there but unable to produce its action so that disease but if it start at very young age classically it should start at older age if it starts at younger age we call it maturity onset diabetes mellitus right or we just call it MODI. MODI stands for maturity onset diabetes of young people. Right? Again, I will repeat and I will see who will tell me the right answer. First of all, we talk about the two extreme. This common string is hyperglycemia. Is that right? This is the death string and it has many, many death stones. It has many, many death stones. stones. Death stones mean different types of diabetes right one extreme is type 1 diabetes in which real problem is under severe reduction in production of insulin due to autoimmune destruction of beta cells other extreme is that there is problem with the action of insulin on the peripheral tissues right and at least initially insulin is present in the patient's blood gradually it might decrease so this is type 2 diabetes so classically doctors a good doctor usually knows about type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes then of course there are some doctors which are very good right if we talk about very good doctor he, he will be aware of some slightly different situations very good do doctor should be aware of that sometimes you might come across a patient who has diabetes mellitus sometimes as a doctor or as a nurse you may come across a patient who has diabetes mellitus and it is at adult age but this diabetes mellitus is behaving like type 1 like as if there is severe deficiency of insulin production real problem is or at least initially 
the real big problem is not peripheral resistance. So we'll call it LADA. What is that? Latent autoimmune diabetes of adults. Is that right? So another way we can say the real difference in type 1 and LADA is one difference is that both of them are due to extreme deficiency of insulin but one is at younger age and other is at adult age. Now we come to the other end. Every doctor knows about type 2 diabetes. Is that right? And every doctor knows that most of the type 2 diabetes patients are at older age, usually 35, 40 plus. But if you come across a very young person, right, and that person is having a type of diabetes mellitus which is behaving like type 2 diabetes, it means this person is having maturity onset diabetes, but in a young person. This person is having maturity onset diabetes, but in a young, young person, right? So we can say, we have talked about four types of diabetes. Now we come to fifth type of diabetes we have already discussed, and that was gestational diabetes, gestational diabetes mellitus or diabetes. Then gestational diabetes is easy to understand. The, of course, all of you must be knowing this is only limited to the females. Okay, gestational diabetes. Then there is another type of diabetes, which may be secondary to some situation. Right? For example, if I take some drug and that drug produces hyperglycemia. And if I'm taking that drug chronically, if I'm taking that drug for a long time, right, then what will happen that I will have a tendency for chronic hyperglycemia and we say that there is drug-induced diabetes mellitus, right? So such kind of diabetes mellitus, right, they are called secondary diabetes mellitus. There are so many types of secondary diabetes mellitus, but just as an example, we talk about one drug. A very commonly used drug is beta blockers. Beta blockers, uh, classically propranolol. Propranolol. Now, propranolol, it blocks basically beta receptors, right? And on the pancreas, in the pancreas, in the islet of Langerhans, on the beta cells, there are beta 2 receptors, right? This is pancreas, here is your beta cell, and on the beta cell, there are, yes, this should be 7 pass receptor. This receptor is basically beta 2 adrenergic receptor. Is that right? Now, what happens that if we give beta blocker, this receptor is not functioning, right? There are alpha receptors there too. If these adrenergic receptors are not functional, right, insulin will not be released properly. There will be dysfunction in, in production and release of insulin. And person will develop a tendency for chronic hyperglycemia. So we will say this is an example of secondary diabetes mellitus. Another example we can take drug like thiazides, patients who are for long term on the thiazides, it's diuretic, that can also produce picture like diabetes mellitus, right? Then we can talk about some endocrine disease like Cushing syndrome, where chronically there is elevation of cortisol hormone, right? And when cortisol hormone is high chronically in your body, Yes, cortisol hormone and glucose metabolism. What cortisol is doing or steroid hormones, right? What they are doing to your body. As far as meta metabolism is concerned, they produce catabolism of the proteins. They produce lipolysis, breakdown of the lipids. So breakdown of adipose tissue and lipolysis produces free fatty acids. And amino acids are also broken down due to catabolism of the proteins. And both of them 
free fatty acids and amino acids or their derivatives, they are supplied to the liver. And in the liver, steroids increase the process of, yes, gluconeogenesis and liver start producing glucose, right? So, what we can say in Cushing syndrome, there is a tendency even in acromegaly and some other endocrine diseases, there is a tendency for hyperglycemia. And such hyperglycemia is called secondary hyperglycemia. So what did we learn up to now? We just learned that diabetes is a dangerous disease and every fifth second, every fifth second, it is killing one person. Globally, about 500 million people are suffering from it. Globally, about 500 million people are suffering with the diabetes mellitus. And in USA, they say there are about 36 or 37 million people suffering with diabetes mellitus. So when we talk, talk about diabetes, it puts a lot of global load. There's a lot of morbidity, there's a lot of mortality related with it. I would say diabetes is a monster every year. How many people die due to this disease? Who will tell me? About 60 to 7 million people. 60 to 7 million people die of diabetes. So I must say that this is basically diabetic monster. And this diabetic monster with a death string of hyperglycemia having death stones in it. These death stones are different types of diabetes with two fundamental underlying process. Either diabetes is not being produced or uh, insulin is not being produced or insulin is unable to produce the effect on the tissues or both problems might occur, right? And type 1 diabetes, insulin is, insulin is not being produced. And type 2 diabetes, what is the real thing? Insulin, at least at the initial stages, initial years of the disease, insulin is being produced, but tissues are not responding to insulin, right? Then we talked about other types of diabetes, right?